Okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's Tuesday, September 3rd, 5.30, and I am going to call the public hearing to order. This is the public hearing to amend Morristown's town plan. As I did last time, I am going to read the um, half of the paragraph that will be struck, and I will also read the proposed replacement for that paragraph. So this is from Morristown's current town plan, and I'm reading from page 11, and I'm reading from halfway through the second paragraph on page 11. And uh, it begins, therefore, this, this is what will be struck, by the way. Therefore, this plan objects to attempts by neighboring mis municipalities to lower speed limits between our community and the interstate on Route 100 in areas located outside the village limits and designated downtowns when reducing the speed limit is not supported by the findings of VTRANS of a VTRANS speed study. Similarly, this plan also objects to attempts by neighboring municipalities to lower speed limits between our town and Essex on Route 15 in areas located outside the village limits and designated downtowns when reducing the speed limit is not supported by the findings of a VTRANS speed study. Similarly, this plan objects to attempts by neighboring municipalities to install traffic signals and roundabouts that are shown to not be warranted by a VTRANS traffic study on the same sections of Route 100 and Route 15, when the request is for an area located outside the village limits or a designated downtown. With that being said, this plan is supportive of increasing pedestrian safety, including lowering speed limits where the Lamoille Valley Rail Trail crosses Vermont Route 15. So that is what is proposed to be struck from the plan. In its stead, it would read, therefore, this plan encourages open communications with neighboring communities through this, the state Route 15 and state Route 100 pass. The town is supportive of the designated village center and downtown initiatives, which strive to enhance pedestrian and bicyclist safety. We support the reduction of the speed limit around the rail trail crossing in the town of Johnson that provides additional bike and pedestrian safety. The town will work collaboratively with our neighbors to ensure they are made aware of any negative impacts to our community, which may occur because of slowing traffic outside the village center and or designated downtowns downtown. That is that. So I guess I would open it up to the board for comment first. The only thing I would say is, is that I think it's important to keep in mind that the reason that uh, we are making this change is that the original language was not accepted by LCPC and the town plan was not accepted by the Regional Planning Commission because of this section in Chapter 3 transportation. Um, having vetted um, this, I think even before I was on the board um, and after um, this, this new language is acceptable to LCPC. Um, it is what they were looking for out of our town plan. And therefore that's what's propagated this change. And we're hoping that once this is finalized, goes to LCPC, um, that our town plan is then in compliance, that it opens up the door for things like downtown designation. Thank you very much. Yes, that would be correct. Any comments from the public? Okay. Um, well, Chris, you already said some of what I was going to say here. Before we do adjourn this first of three meetings tonight on September 16th, well, I, I will say the uh, the trustees are holding a um, a public hearing this week, and so on September 16th, the next regular select board meeting, the plan would be for the board, if it should so choose, to vote to approve the amendment as. Um, presented tonight. And then following that meeting, the trustees would then perhaps do the same, hopefully would do the same. The uh, town plan would then be sent to LCPC, as Chris has just mentioned, and we are expecting the LCPC board to then accept our 
town plan, which would make us um, part of the regional regional planning commission, which would be great and allow us to do things like downtown designation, designation but not just that. Um, there are a number of grants and fundings um, that uh, we are not that are not available to us right now because we don't have a regionally accepted town plan. So having said that, I would take a motion to adjourn to close the hearing. So moved. So I have a motion to, to adjourn and close the hearing. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second by George, motion by Chris. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor of adjourning and closing the public hearing, say aye. 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 That would be unanimous, Judy. Thank you. Okay, great. Uh, so I am going to call at uh, 539 the uh, Board of Liquor and Tobacco Control to order. Do you have any additions or deletions? None. Uh, we have minutes from August 5th which are in your packet. Do I have a motion? I would make a motion to accept the Board of Liquor and Tobacco Control meeting minutes of August 5, 2024. So I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion by Chris and a second by Richard. Any discussion? All those in favor of approving the minutes from August 5, 2024, say aye. 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 That would be unanimous. For tonight, we have no liquor license applications. We have no tobacco license applications, but we do have a catering, uh, a request to cater by uh, Green Mountain Distilleries. This is for the 14th of September from 12 to 5 at 2919 Laporte Road. It's a special event, not a catering. It is a special event. Thank you very much. Very different. Yeah, it's a special events permit. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do I have a motion? I would move to approve the special events permit for Green Mountain Distillers LLC to take place on September 14, 2024 from noon <laughs> until 5 p.m. at 2919 Layport Road. It's gonna be an event that will take place inside their distillery and within a fenced in area outside. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Thank you for the correction, Laura. I just read that because it was under the catering permit title. Uh, any discussion? Okay, all those in favor of the motion as presented, say aye. 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 That would be unanimous, Judy. <coughs> I would take a motion to adjourn. So moved. I have a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second by Richard. Any discussion? All those in favor of adjournment of the Liquor and Tobacco Control meeting? Say aye. 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 That would be unanimous as well. That's okay. I got to wait a minute anyways. I would say there's a very strong correlation between his presence and the length of the meetings. <laughs> we're, we're seeing one of them, Tom, that's for sure. I always make sure. I feel like we're living in an entirely different world.
still happening, still going live. Because of that, it's still not alive. So I don't know if it's still alive or that. We appreciate it, Judy. When technology didn't work at school and the tech experts came in and fixed it, I was so appreciative. We're all set. We're all set? Okay, it is... Uh, Tuesday, September 3rd, 2024, it's 5.41. I'm going to call the regular select board meeting to order. Any changes or additions? No. Okay, we have two sets of minutes to approve. We have the minutes of the public hearing from uh, August 19th, 2024. I would move to accept the minutes of the uh, public hearing um, meeting on August 19th, 2024. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion by Chris and a second by George. Do I have any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes from the public hearing on August 19th, 2024, say aye. 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 That would be unanimous, Judy. We also have minutes from our select board meeting on the 19th of August, 2024. I would make the motion to accept the select board meeting minutes of August 19th, 2024. So I have a motion to accept the minutes. Do I have a second? Second. So I have a motion by Chris and a second by Richard. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes of the regular select board meeting on August 19th, 2024, please say aye. 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 And that would be unanimous. Moving on to new business. We have in our packet a, uh, a pretty detailed dis, uh, schedule of everything that's going on for the next couple of months, um, all in regard to really leading up to the election in November and all that needs to be done. It's a pretty detailed um, <clears throat> schedule. There's a lot on this schedule. I'd like to thank administration for putting this together. And I know uh, our town manager and Judy and um, Sarah were very involved in putting this together. Mo the vast majority of this is required by statute. What isn't required, and I guess what we need to talk about tonight, are the three special town meetings that are right now planned for the 3rd of October, the 9th of October, and the 15th of October. And these would be special meetings to get information out to the public in regards to the, um, the, the, the charter, number one, but also the, uh, the potential um, special tax assessment district for Jersey Heights and the method of financing uh, for that stormwater permit. So, I guess the question to the board right now is, is really just about those special town meetings. Are we good with having three of those? So I, you know, I've talked a little bit to Brent and to Don uh, separately about this. Um, one of my biggest concerns is, is whether this room would be appropriate if we have a sizable crowd show up for these meetings. Mm -hmm. So I would suggest we consider um, having the special town meetings on the charter and the tax assessment district for Jersey Heights, potentially at the VFW. It's a larger space. Zoom works there, the OWL works there. We've had other joint meetings with the trustees and such there. And that way, um, no matter what we have for a crowd, it could accommodate it. Um, and uh, I think it would just be a better venue because we, we've had police um, public hearings here and people were out in the hallway, they were jam-packed in the back of this room. It just didn't, it wasn't comfortable and, and 
I think would be more constructive for us to consider a different venue. The other piece of this is, is that if what Sarah uh, Haskin um, shared with us the last meeting about the timing of the ballots, she orders the ballots on October 1st. Um, it's once the proof is done, um, it's really up to the uh, publisher to mail those. So they have to be out by the 16th, but there's a good chance it would be out prior to the 16th. So whether having another third public hearing on the 15th um, is really would be that fruitful. I think that there's opportunities for us to get information in an op-ed piece into the News and Citizen on Front Porch Forum prior um, to our October 3rd meeting. That's on a Thursday, the News and Citizen comes out that day. So if we could have something in that paper talking, explaining to voters what it is that we're trying to do both in terms of the charter as well as Jersey Heights, just give them the facts of what we're looking for. Um, and then the following week, run another uh, separate uh, piece and hopefully Tommy Gardner would um, you know, do an article to help uh, publicize these meetings. But I think that personally, I think by the 15th, ballots are gonna be out there. If we have a large turnout for the first two, and it seems germane to do another one on the 15th, we, could, we only have a, what, a 48 hour warning period. So we could always warn it if we needed to ahead of time. But I think two public hearings would guess where we needed to be. I completely agree. I think three is overkill, uh, especially if we're going to use the VFW. I would question because these are so important um, that we might push them till six o'clock because I think a lot of people will want to be here and uh, 530 makes it very difficult for anybody who is working out of town. So that would be my suggestion is that we bump the two informations out to six. Think, Just so I we can come. Um, yeah. For this. Good. So I'm going to suggest that for the schedule, we could change the time to six o'clock and maybe put on the schedule that that October 15th meeting is going to be a tentative meeting, a tentative special meeting. I'd, I'd like to leave it on there just in case, as Chris had suggested, that it could be that there's some reason that we would need a third one. Yeah. I mean, clearly the first two, I think we're all in agreement, would be good, but let's not cross off the third one yet. And we can, these are special town, these are special meetings that can be, we don't want to warn them at 48 hours before, but we can do that if we need to. Okay. I would agree with that. We don't need to take any action on this. It's just a FYI at this point. Uh, we just, you know, Sarah and administration have talked about this. Um, you all made your, your point last select board meeting about wanting to make sure that everybody was informed about this decision. George has followed up with a very detailed um, <coughs> summary and recommendations. So um, these are three dates that would be available and we wanted to propose them to you and I also wanted you all to discuss whether or not three was too many. Um, I think the first two are important um, because ballots are being ordered on October 1st. And, you know, uh, this schedule states that ballots will all be available by October 16th. That's by state statute, but in actuality, as you mentioned, Chris, um, more than likely voters will be receiving mail ballots you know, the seventh or as soon as the seventh or eighth of October. So uh, October third meeting seems important, and then uh, the ninth seems like it would be wise as well. Do we need to confirm that the VFW is right. indeed uh, we would available? Yeah, yeah we we uh, we have not reached out to them yet, so we, we need to confirm that. Um, I've had discussions with with Judy about uh, the tech equipment. I mean, since the new open meeting laws have come into place, there's additional stuff mm -hmm. going on that she's dealing with. Just want to make sure everything like Wi-Fi, yeah. It, yeah. you know, meets our needs, et cetera. But Judy thinks that 
shouldn't be a problem as long as we plan ahead. And if the VFW is not available, then reach out to the school. Reach we can out do to that them. as well. Um, I, Sarah told me that there was a community event last year uh, before the March vote, I, I, no, I guess sorry. in January. It was in January yeah. 6th. Yeah. yeah. So that's another alternative we could we could look into if the VFW was not available. Yep. Okay. Uh, the other one too, I'll just uh, put out there is the Wayne Center. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, the Wayne Center might be because it's going to give more people than less less people than the VFW, but with just chairs, might be able to get seventy five people maybe at the Wayne Center. Yeah, it's not a bad thing. Can the yeah, I can the technology work there? Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That, yeah right. that would be. That, yeah. yeah. That would be fine. Yeah, so, the Wing Center is a nice venue, and I was just in there picking up tables for the for the corn roast last week, and I want to say the capacity is around ninety in there. Okay. All right. So that's. So it might be a better venue than the VFW, and the only reason I'm saying that is because um, people might hear you better at the Wing Center. The VFW with the high ceilings and the way that it's set up, it's it's a little harder to hear. Yeah, just something to think about. And then also to um, not to throw a wrench in anything, but I might be on vacation one of those days. Not sure yet, um, which just stresses me out a little bit, but I, I'll just share anyhow, 10-9, October 9th, I might not be in town. Brent already knows it's a vacation for me. I'm not sure I'm going yet because I'm the house sitter for all of my dogs, so we'll see. Um, but we do have somebody that's doing media now for planning and BRB, Casey Smith. So Casey's more than capable to fill in for me. I just, you know. You'll set her up ahead of time just to solve. make sure. Yeah, yeah. I'll have done the third, no matter what we are, right. so that'll help. So, um, yeah. Just yeah, go ahead. I just want to talk about the venues, but go ahead. So my, I propose that, uh, you know, I do know that Judy's on vacation the ninth. Uh, Casey, we've we've already trained, but uh, I propose that we have her on site on the third and actually running everything, setting up everything if possible. And so that's sort of like a yeah trial run. So the ninth, uh, we're comfortable that. I mean, I, I've seen her already do some planning council and other meetings, but since it's an off-site venue, that we double up on staff just to make sure the ninth runs smoothly. I guess my suggestion would be, since we don't know how many people are going to come, if I'm correct that 90 is the capacity at the wing center, I'm thinking that we should edge on the side of uh, caution here and go with the VFW for the first meeting, because it's certainly a bigger venue. We can get well over 150 people in there. Um, and if it turns out that we didn't need such a large venue, we can go to the wing center the second time. But. Yeah. I, I guess that's what I would suggest to the board is VFW for meeting number one. I guess my only concern with the wing center, which I do like, uh, is parking. Um, that that could be an issue, um, just because if we have handicapped people and that that it's, uh, you know, you've got you're. Uh, it's essentially see, essentially all on street parking unless you want to walk yeah. from here. Uh, well, so yeah, you put a lot of people crossing streets, so you know that might be. Okay. The other thing I'll point out to you really quickly is that the Wing Center does charge, so there would be a small fee. I think it's like $25 an hour. Okay. I would just suggest that we small. ask VFW first. Yep. Yeah, and then, so yep. and then have a fallback if we needed to. Okay. And we can judge, see the attendance of the first one. Yep. Yeah. I imagine that first meeting will be well attended, too. I agree. So. The other thing I would mention is, is that um, George, you had you talked about postcards and, and stuff, and yeah. I and I don't I, uh, go ahead. I I'm not in favor of spending any money on this. No. I think that there's I, opportunities to get information out. I'm glad you, you led there, Chris, because I was going to bring up uh, that I've had a chance to, to think this through a little sure. bit more, at least from my mind. And what I would put out for conversation and discussion is that we use the Morristown, the town of Morristown's website, as is being used now mm -hmm. for the three acre uh, and for the town charter. Uh, if anything needs to be beefed up, we beef it up a little bit. 
but the use of the, the variety of social media yeah. for whatever generation looks at whatever media, newspapers, whatever, is limited to the legal requirements of posting the meetings. And if we need a separate, because the article, maybe the, the box, the, the ad that is, the warning has to be in certain forms. But the, any venue we use, any site we use to, to try and disseminate information is more about where the information is, and that's morristownvt.org. Yeah, rather than trying to, to jam all the information into newspapers, articles, whatever, that we continually push people back to the, to the website, our website, that if people say, well, I don't have technology, I can't get to there, then there's something that says, if you want hard copies, we can print them for you and you can come in and get them. Or if you can't get out, we'll mail them to you on a more limited basis. But I, in my mind, there's two, two reasons. Tom talked about cost when we were talking two weeks ago, and Laura talked about it a bit as well. And I think certainly if we're going out on social media, there's not going to be any cost. And we can continue to push the same message on social media as many times as they'll let us post it. Right. If it's once a week, then we make sure that we're posting every week. If it's once every three days, we post it every three days. But it basically says, here's the next meetings, here's how you get to the information, here's the website, and those kinds of things. But we don't put the information there, we put the information here, and then everybody accesses it either in one way or another. And I think the other advantage that I thought about of that is, while we don't have one up now on either the three acre or on the, the, grant, on the uh, charter, probably because we don't need one, but I'm starting to think, we're gonna to have to rehearse this for how we do the budgets, because it's the same problem. It's the same media difference of timing when the budgets go out and when the vote goes out and waiting for town reports seems to be, no, it doesn't, seem it doesn't make any sense anymore. Um, the, the, uh, I would say it's brand, but whoever starts an FAQ. So if we start to hear the same question at, a, at the first of these informational meetings, Brent makes up another page on the, on the report that says, here are some common questions that we heard last night. Here's the response to those questions. And that can be grown after the second meeting. We got new questions, we can add on. <clears throat> and that, then now we're starting to be dynamic in what we're putting up there. It's, it's timely as much as we can. If only one person asks the question, that's a determination. Is that a very important question? But only one person asks it, we put it up there. If 20 people ask the same kind of basic question, we put that one up there. If anything we think seems to serve the, yes, yeah, exactly, Judy. Mm -hmm. there. Yeah, but I'm saying within each of those, the, the Jersey three acre or the, the proposed town charter, right now there isn't a, a, a Q and A, because I don't think there is a, an FAQ, I should say, because there probably isn't a need for an FAQ. But as we go, it's one of the things we could, could stop to do either if questions come up at the three acre. So I'm on a first discussion. If Brent just gets a call on the charter and, and answers it and says, geez, that was an important question. He can stop another FAQ. It gives us the flex to control uh, and keep um, current changes in our, our documentation, not the budget, but not the charter, but the supporting documentation can be managed, I think, far better if we are managing it here. It cuts down costs other than maybe going to the newspaper to advertise in a smaller block the key things, the website address, the how do you get them by mail, how do you get them, pick them up. Um, that to me makes it accessible to everybody. It makes it consistent. And we're really working on one platform as opposed to trying to work with the others. And I don't know what other people think about that, but that was uh, my reaction to, to Tom and, and Laura were right. If we start doing postcards or mailings or flyers, somebody's got print, somebody's got stuff, yeah. postage, the whole nine yards. And I don't think we need to do that. So to me, that in my mind, this is a, a more efficient way to do it, number one. It's more receptive to changes in the appropriate way. And it, we can then hit if it's TikTok that we need for the 18 to 20, whatever that, mod, you know, Brent's laughing at me because it's wrong. <laughs> what, whatever it is, you, you know what I mean? Whatever the hot, the hot topic is for the 18 to 25, we'll go there. If it's Facebook for the 70 and over group, we'll go there. <laughs> if, you know, whatever it is, we can modify them. We can do seven websites if we want, if they all work, because all we're doing is putting up 
Yeah. Rudimentary access information. <laughs> Done. Yeah. Up, up and, off my soapbox. And yeah. the thing I like about what you're saying is keeping the keeping the website central. Keeping mm -hmm. that, keeping so, that the, the important focus. And the, the only thing I would add to that is, is that we want to make this as simple as possible. And I think that if we put something as an op-ed piece um, into the News and Citizen, mm -hmm. that it bullet points the important yeah. issues. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then for more information, yeah. more yeah. detailed information, you direct them to the website. Yeah. But it gives them the basic information. Yes. It's in front of them. They can read it. It's simple. Mm -hmm. It gets it gets yeah. at least the seed planted. Yeah. Same thing with Front Porch Forum. Same thing with any other venue that we we use, mm -hmm. and and we can continue to do those follow ups. But I think having the basic information mm -hmm. out there every time we publish something, mm -hmm. and then direct them to the yeah. to the website makes sense because it some does. people may not want to do that extra step while they're doing this you know why is it important to me well if i'm reading it it may be important and, and that's enough that, 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 right. i agree with that chris i don't see any issue with that at all yeah. uh, and i just want to be clear judy knows this but that when we're posting stuff um front page form in particular you cannot post and expect it to be on the next day you don't know right. so we need to be careful because uh, they do it, uh, it's an algorithm by how many. So if, if there's too many, you get bumped, and that's why you'll get some postings twice. Facebook, even though we see it, also is a delay. There's uh, generally a 24 hour before um, the feed goes to somebody else. So just anticipate um, right. that we have to be ahead of and that you can't, it, front page form in particular, you cannot control when it's going to go. And so um, just that. And then, um, how about, Point, I want to point out of the web. Can you pull up the website? Yeah. So this, see how the um, this was what I told everybody about. Let me share my screen. Richard, do you want to say something? You wait. Okay. Share it so anybody online can see it as well. Okay. So because I had brought this up, see how departments elections are crossing over on the header. Yes, that can be fixed. So it, yeah, it has to do with I did ask them about that. The it has to do with what you're looking at for your um, computer. So it's how my computer set up to read it. It doesn't do that. Um, it just has to do with how it's set up. Like what my preferences are, what my whatever. That's what they told me. So I did look at it. Yeah, I can ask it. I just, yeah, because yeah. I don't have my preference. I mean, I know I build websites I know and, and it shouldn't, it right? should not feed over. It's you, yeah, but right. Okay. Right. I, but I do not sorry. say, no, that's fine. Richard? It just looks, it looks amateur. Sorry. So I was yes. just, I was just going to say, I was going to pretty much say exactly what Chris said, and I, but I think like your Georgia comment about FAQs, I think we already have a pile of them. If we went back and looked at some of the other, the other meetings yeah. we had about this, and maybe put some of those bullet points in there. And to Laura's point, the newspaper, Front Porch Forum, Facebook, we know those those are really the newspaper is probably the most direct, maybe with the least amount of viewership. <laughs> but the other ones are really just best effort, um, yeah. no matter what it is, if it's Front Porch Forum or Facebook. Um, but we do have to put something in there that says this is what it is because if I got to click twice, I'm not looking. Yeah. So that's that's kind of how I yeah. not, not that I'm not but right I well, really which is good to go. which is what I like on the screen that Judy had before and you don't need to put it back up but the the real front page mm -hmm. has the buttons or the access the links yeah. for three acre stormwater and and the uh, the charter right now so it's a one push click and then obviously you've got choices within that but we got to get them to go there we, right. we are not going to go there if you see something that doesn't pique your interest that's what that's what i'm thinking yeah i would agree with that i think chris's bullet point right. suggestions are a good one yes i agree judy um, so today i did a um uh notice on blasted did you all get anything in your emails yeah yes yeah. did a couple of days ago yeah Maybe we got another one okay. today. Oh, yeah. so, oh, no. i have the capabilities of when we do do something with the town charter or with the questions for jersey height i have the capabilities of making that and those announcement and putting uh sending it to all of our subscribers that's great for all of our mm -hmm. meetings 
So as you've heard, Tom and the Greens just said they got it today too. So we have that capability. So right. people don't have to generally be every day figuring it out. Did they post something? Did they post something? I can send out an alert that we've done some information posting and it's on the website. That's great. Uh, and yep. again, like George said, we, we put it right on the front page. People just click that button and all the documents are there. They just choose what they want to look at. And I'll make sure that they go in some type of order. I don't know, Brett and I can talk about like how you want those set up now once you, once you get to that page. Okay. And Brent, we talked about um, you were anticipating uh, of the conversations we've had, you were going to get some information. Um, is that going to be up before the meetings? Because we know they're going to ask it. Um, what, what, can you, I, uh, I'm dealing with this on a daily basis, so I want to make yes. sure I'm understanding um, which. We, the, when we had the meeting, there were some very specific questions about, you know, uh, what the cost is going to be, who's it's going to affect. Yeah. Um, will we have those answers up and would they be on the F? Yeah, so because that would just save us a lot of time if sure so, so so there's going to be answer to specifically we're going to have a concrete description of what the special tax assessment district will consist of we will have uh, very detailed information about the pro rata impermeable surfaces for each building what we will not have is some sort of more concrete number on the cost uh, because um, we will be negotiating with the Agency of Natural Resources to accept whatever uh, stormwater solution we submit. We have one submitted currently, this impending status, um, and but we might find more cost effective method and we might negotiate that to try to reduce the cost to the residents in the town. So I, I cannot say that we will have a concrete amount for this, for this, uh, but I will have an explanation in writing in an FAQ about why, and I'll try to inform that it's people. We're working on it, yeah. I have confirmed that based upon Tyler's experience dealing with this and Johnson, that the solution that we have right now is in his opinion worst case scenario oh, that's good. so I've, I've doubly checked that if mm -hmm. not triple checked it and um and that's where the two hundred thousand dollar that is even more buffer right so we're very yeah. safe with that two hundred thousand so dollar borrowing that's amount that's the worst case number yeah. yeah that's good though that is very good to hear yeah. well yeah, good right. so if i can kind of pull this together it's safe to say that the board certainly the good news is we all understand that you know we need to access multiple uh, media sources to get the word out and and we're all kind of on on board with that so in regards to this so we're we're definitely going to go forward with the meeting on uh, October 3rd the meeting on October 9th the meeting on the 15th would be tentative and we're looking at that first meeting to be at the VFW and then maybe change the venue depending upon uh, what the uh, participation looks like on that on that day and the time change. And the time change, thank you, to six o'clock. Yeah. Yeah, time. Eight o'clock? Yeah. I think that's reasonable, yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you, Judy. Okay, I'm gonna move on to, well, go ahead. If we can, for this meeting tonight, if we can get a pass the cost of the Jersey Act people consequences of the vote of people voting down that two hundred thousand uh, dollar well, I don't anticipate that will happen but what are the consequences what will it will occur if they do I mean right now people out there you know it's more money who, who knows I anticipate that it will go through okay but uh, you don't know then 
who pays for it. Then what happens to the whole project to begin with? And can we put out the information that you know, there, there is a possibility for the whole town to, to pay for it? It's an infrastructure repair. It's infrastructure to make use of the whole town. So to answer your question, I mean, as, as Brent's already said, we don't we don't know what the total cost is going to be. And we have estimated and we've actually got that number out there several times now at several meetings and sixteen dollars and change per month for each of the sixty four parcels. So it would be, you know, it'd be easy to do the the divisor for the entire town too which of course is going to be a lot less but but it's important to understand that it's going to be an estimate that's that's all we're going to be able to throw out there which is what we've already done and we've shared that with all the members of um, of the public that have that have come to those meetings I know is people going to be asking that question. I think I think we might be saying what the what the worst case scenario would be. But go ahead, Brent. So, we, so uh, I will I will I've already put out a uh, an amortization schedule for one of the special select board meetings. I shared that with uh, it was mostly Jersey Heights residents that attended, but uh, I will update that because that was based upon just assumptions. We will know for a certainty what percentage of the town liability for impermanence is. We will know with a certainty of what each resident's uh, liability is. So we'll be able to break it down by residents, the, the, the total percentage. What, and I will have um, more information along those lines. What I won't have is I will not be able to inform the select board or the community that this is what we're going to move forward with and this is what we're going to get approved for because we want our engineer to be working on it and looking at potential alternative solutions that could save all of us money. So I, I will be working on that and I be assured I, I will be providing information on that. Another part of your question was what if the financing is voted down? The financing is voted down rather than amortizing it over 15 years, which is what I provided before. And 20 years is a language that we're able to to go up to, not to exceed 20 years. It means it would all be due and payable immediately. So whether it's the residents, uh, if if the special tax assessment district is voted down to all those residents, it'll come due immediately. It'll impact them in, in the next if so there's there's different different scenarios uh, but voting down the special tax assessment district or voting down the financing does not impact the fact that in order to secure the 70 something percent possibly more because once we secure it if we if we create cost savings it could be 80 percent could be 85 percent we don't know yet um, in order to secure that uh, we had to move forward and accept responsibility. Okay, thank you. Yep. And my only other thing is how there's only like a hundred or so descriptions to town size. And there's a as many meetings as there is so for every uh, select board meeting, charter, town manager search committee. How many people that you sent that notice out? Subscribers. Send oh, subscribers. Yeah. Subscribers there are. Yeah. However, 150 people. Yeah, I yeah. think that's what it was. Yeah. I don't know how. I have 50 out of the town. I mean, that's not very many really to get. It's it's people like. Probably we'll get more signed up. But remember, that we're not relying. We're not relying entirely on that. Remember, we're good. We've got all these other venues. That's just one more tool in our toolbox. The, the subscription is very subscribers. They're very good to have. I mean, I, I'm for that. I'm wondering how we can get more because it's it's really kind of cool to get these. The, the you know the glass stuff and everything else is uh, it's a way to keep the people at home immediately. Right. Uh, 
I don't know how you get more people to sign up for that. Well, they've got to they've got to ask for it. Obviously, we can't can't send it to them if they're not asking for it. But how do we get Brent, that? we can start posting on Facebook and Front Porch Forum. Uh, you know, once a week, even have you subscribed? And this is how you do it, and this is the benefit. Um, and we'll, we'll work on that. As you know, in the last two and a half years, while I've been on the board, and you've been at many of the meet, you've been at pretty well all the meetings. We've talked about this many times and asked people to to sign up. But we can keep on doing it. We can keep on, but we can keep on doing it. We can keep on doing it, right? Right. Right. It, which is my point. Which, which is, and that's why, and that's why we're reaching out with these different the you know the diversity and variety of venues that we're going to be using. That's why we're telling you. We're depending on you to tell everybody. <laughs> that's your job. The public broadcasting system. Don't cry. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Go ahead, yeah. George. Yeah. I, I would say one thing to Tom's request for <coughs> estimates of, of the various pieces, which yeah. I, I understand exactly why you're asking for that, Tom. Some people would like to see some numbers in some way, in some form. The danger in getting too many estimates that are working with each other becomes the bottom line of what is a what is a taxpayer going to pay if if we all have it without the the special tax assessment right. or the people in Jersey Heights who hear the number if they they are when you start piling one assessment on top of another the accuracy goes to heck in a handcuff yeah and 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 unfortunately because I've done it for too many years for the school. People see an estimate and they hear an estimate when you tell them. A week later, it's locked in stone. It's fact. And it's, right. and it's dangerous because now the real numbers come in and it's not what Brent estimated. We supported his estimate. And they said, what the heck happened? Well, the, what happened is all of these were estimates yes. and something twitched and or something else moved. And then it then cascades because when you made a mistake at the top, it just cascades through everything else. So it's it's I understand the request, and I said it's not an unreasonable request, Tom. But there is a danger to overuse of estimates. Is all I'm going to say. Yeah, and that can go either way, too, George. It can, or positive or negative. It it can. Yeah. It absolutely works. It can. They'll see that number, and that's all they'll remember. Right. Yeah. You're going to be asked. Oh, yeah. And I, th I think what Brent just responded to is he's going to have a lot of a lot of the numbers. If we're at one number that's an estimate, then then that's a little bit different. But again, if everything cascades off of that one number, everything everything then can go up or down depending on what the real number is. So we've got to be cautious, but try and provide as much reasonable information as we can. Okay, I'm going to move on to. Old business, we have none. No. Approving the warrants. Do I have a motion to approve the warrants? So moved. So I have a motion to approve the warrants. So I have a second. Second. I have a second by. I have a motion by Chris and a second by Richard. Any discussion about the warrants? All those in favor of approving the warrants, say aye. 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 That would be unanimous. Community comments. I think we've heard them already. Okay. <laughs> we have no community comments. Schedule. Uh, so the next regularly scheduled select board meeting will be on the 16th, uh, followed the next week by the charter public hearing. That is one of the statutory meetings that we need to hold. There's two of them on here on the 23rd and the 30th. We'll have that, the public hearings for the charter. And we will also have on the 30th, the special meeting to sign the resolution and the warning. Do we have any other business? I don't think we do. You already stated uh, September 16th, select board town plan vote. 
Um, yeah, I said that so, earlier. Yeah. So uh, we should add that into the schedule too. Okay. 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 Any other business? Okay. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. I have a motion to adjourn. I have by Chris. I have a second by George. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 That would be unanimous. Thank you very much, folks. Thanks, Tom. Yeah.